In our last tutorial we left off at this point with two buttons which is perfect for what we're going to do today which is looking at how we can resize and position widgets um, around our different layouts. Now this can actually be a bit of a, a bit of a confusing topic, there is a specific way to do this so I'll cover this so be sure to stay tuned and pay attention. I'm in exactly the same spot as it was before so here's the main.py file and we have the test.kv file that we left off in the last episode. I will configure a GitHub but now if you want to just automatically sort of copy and paste these I'll leave a link to a video I have on Blackbox uh, that will allow you to go ahead and sort of take these if you're not already in the starting position although I would recommend going back in the series if you haven't and learn some of the other fundamentals. So without further delay, let me showcase what I, what I meant when I said it can be a bit frustrating if you're not fully clued up in the knowledge. You would think that in this first button, in our Kivi design language file, I could specify a size of 200 density independent pixels wide and 100 density independent pixels denoted by DP um, high on the y-axis. Now this doesn't actually work, which again, doesn't really make any sense at all uh, if you if you're not really in tune with some of the building blocks here with Kivi. So I'll I'll showcase another example of of really a property that works in this case. So I'll take the size hint and I'll go ahead and I can just specify let's say zero point seven and that will be the x axis, like I said, the width, and then it's ordered into the y axis, the height. Now. Let's see, if we run this, save it and run it, um, I'm very overly cautious at saving um, due to caching issues. We have a button that looks reasonable now. It takes up 0 0.7 um, of the space widthwise, rather than the full portion that you can see reflected on the left. And it takes up the full screen heightwise. Well, why did that work? Well, when we specify these density independent pixels, essentially pixels that resize for different screens or densities, uh, that was fine. And again, here's another example um, showing 0 0.5 of the, of the screen or the window being taken up by this button. But the issue was that works if we just have a blank standard layout, just a blank layout or just a standard widget layout. But when we go into different box layouts or different versions of actually specific layouts uh, what happens is that size parameter will not be taken into account for that fixed size with the dps density independent pixels unless we pass none and none to the size hint because naturally that size hint takes precedence because it wants to proportionally fill out uh, that box layout so I'll show you two examples. On the first button, I pass none, none, and I've got that uh, predefined sort of hard-coded in size. And in the second one, I just display one and one. So this will take up the remainder of the portion to fill that box layout that isn't being taken up by that first button, which is very small because we specified the standard size. So hopefully that's starting to make sense. The It automatically will assign basically an even amount of space to fill that box layout. Now we just specify um, a sort of density independent pixels without passing that size hint parameter of none, it just won't work, it won't do anything. So we need to remember that. Now we can actually change the orientation as I've showcased here to show some other properties around positioning. So, as I said, the standard orientation in that comment, by the way, comments like Python can be denoted by a pound sign or hashtag, uh, the standard orientation is horizontal, but really in a lot of box layouts, which are more similar to a mobile screen when you're developing more involved apps, you want a vertical orientation. So we can explicitly set that above the button layer. Now we can do that. And then when we go ahead here, we can start to look at how we can actually start to position things along the um, the axis here. So what we've done is we've specified within this position hint, we specified an X value, which will automatically take the left side and set it to 0.25% of the width. So a quarter away along the width of the window. Now we could also set that to the right. Well, what changes here? 
Well, you see, it actually sticks to the left side of the screen. And the reason for that is because the right edge of this shape or button or rectangle that we've set in this case, because of the height and width properties, will actually sit at a quarter length of the screen. So it looks like this is staying fully on the left side of the screen. So sometimes I find it easier just to use the X uh, key there instead of going into the right where we just use X and the left to define where we place things. But again, you can see if we specified the right of one, it would move all the way along to the right hand side of the screen because one is that full width of the window that we have. And again, we could specify the left of one and what this would do is actually automatically take it back to, to the other side of the window. So that's just, just a way of sort of showcasing how the button responds to positioning. Um, there is another very useful way to, to set the position as well. And what that would be in this case, where we're looking at really displaying things along a horizontal axis right now because we've got the vertical orientation we can use center x and again we can set the the x value along the the width axis between zero and one one being furthest to the right and if we specify center x of 0.5 or 0 0.5 in this case it will place the center of that button in the very center of the the window 0 0.5 and you can see that starts to align nicely. And you can start to see how you could embed different layouts together, particularly for a mobile application, and start to create something that's that's a bit more meaningful. So that's a good foundation to learn. Now, what we can do is actually set the, the orientation to horizontal, and we can look at how we can start to set some of the Y properties. So we're start sort of starting to pivot the layout um, and look at how we would do this. And maybe more of a still a box layout, but maybe a layout more fitting, let's say, for, for a tablet sort of screen or, or a web browser. Now, the standard orientation is set to horizontal, so we don't actually need to explicitly state that. You can if you find it helpful. But what we could do in this first button is set the position hint of Y to 1, and something interesting will happen. So if we go ahead and set that, you can see that we don't see a button. Why is that happening? Well, zero is the bottom of the screen in this instance, all the way up in increments to one being the top. However, that Y is currently ta essentially taking the bottom of that button, the bottom edge, and it's setting it to the top of the screen. So it actually drifts off of the screen. So we don't even see that. So be careful not to get confused by that. Whereas if I was to set top to one, AKA the top of the button, the top edge to one, the top of the window, we naturally see this again. So it's something that you may temporarily get caught out on. Uh, so be careful not to, uh, yeah, not to fall victim to that trick. Now, what you can also do is like we had center X, we can set the center Y. So we could naturally set this wherever we want, but it's going to take the center of that particular widget, in our case, a button, and it's going to set it along that 0 0.7 height relative to obviously one being the top of the window. So you can, I like to save very frequently with file save or control S just to avoid caching issues and make sure uh, my GUI updates uh, successfully. But you can see that behavior is displaying exactly as anticipated. So we can X out of there, uh, make something a bit tidier to sort of round off this particular block. I know it's not the most stimulating, but it's really essential knowledge to ensure that you're sort of competent going forward when you start to develop, develop more complex GUIs and apps. So what we can do now is go back into our test.kv uh, file, our KV design language file. Uh, we can again uh, convert the orientation to vertical, make it something a bit more reminiscent of a modern application or GUI, so like a mobile layout. And we can actually change things. So we have a button, but that doesn't need to be a button. Typically, what you may see at the top of the screen is text. So that is just labels, how we render text to the screen, essentially, within a widget. So we just change the text slightly to make it button below, as this particular widget is no longer a button. Now, we're actually going to comment out the size and we've still got our non values passed to the parameter, but we can actually do a few different things. So I'll just clear up the font size, make it slightly larger and cleaner. But instead of specifying the size within the, um, the size property here, 
we can break this out instead of supplying two values an x and a y we can actually explicitly state width and height if you're more comfortable than that so if you potentially forget uh, the ordering or you're not comfortable with x or y terminology you can just explicitly state width or height it may make it more readable uh, for following along later or for other people working collaboratively and as you can see when we go ahead and run this it will work exactly the same now we can also go ahead and modify this slightly just just to have things a bit cleaner because we've naturally switched uh, the layer around so we will place the center x at 0 0.5 um, and we can go ahead and review these changes make sure it makes sense and then we can check out how this looks on our screen so we can see things look a bit cleaner uh, a nice box layout we've got a button that we can click and text rendered to make it more reminiscent of things that we will build in the future now that is pretty much the entire scope of sizing and positioning widgets exceptionally important uh, and with some things to remember such as that size hint will always sort of look for the foundational space within our our layout so we need to be cautious there um, also worth noting you can break out the width and the height um, and that's important too make a few more changes here just sample button uh, happy with the background color the size hint and so on and then we can just run this and this will give us a nice starting point uh, for our next episode where we'll look to build on uh, layouts potentially embedding these together uh, some more focus around intricate things to do with widgets and towards our grand goal of making some nice polished guis and applications so thank you for watching and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next episode